Hello, I am Alexander Boutet, and today I will explain to you how to create a preprint using a revision template. For more information about preprints, you can visit the AJNR's website. You can download these templates from the submission guidelines section. Let's mention the benefits first. There are so many benefits to using AJNR's preprints. First, you get rapid publication. By utilizing our revision templates, your article can be published as a preprint just a few days after acceptance. This means immediate credibility and visibility as each preprint is assigned the DOI, indexed in PubMed, and becomes citable within those three days. Your submission goes directly to publication in its provided form within a few days, bypassing the proof stage. A final polished version will replace the preprint after editorial revisions, ensuring no duplicate versions exist. Moreover, it's cost-effective. There is no charge for publishing preprints with AJNR. The process is also user-friendly. The idea is simple. First, you use this template to format your original submission. Then, you work on revisions within this formatted version to create the revised manuscript. After that, you delete the highlights to create a clean version that will be published as a preprint. Don't worry, watch the video and you'll see how easy this process is and how great the final product will look as a preprint. I will be using one of our own manuscripts to walk you through this process. As you can see, each template contains comments attached. These comments provide detailed explanations for each section. We highly recommend reading them all as you go through each section. Now let's start with the title. Keep your submitted manuscript and title page open so that you can just copy and paste the material for each section. It is generally a good idea to choose match destination formatting each time you paste. Next, we will copy and paste each author's name one by one. Be careful here with punctuation. Now, let's copy and paste each section of the abstract using, once again, match destination formatting. Next, fill in the abbreviation sections. Make sure to read the comment regarding abbreviations as some common terms do not require an explanation when used for the first time. Note that some fields, such as the date, will be filled in later by the post processing team. Now it's time to insert your disclosure.
After inserting the information for the corresponding author, you can then move on to writing each author's affiliation. For example, Dr. Birag Berksu Oskara and Dr. Max Wintermark are both affiliated with MD Anderson Cancer Center. So you would list them together like this. After a quick double check, we can move on. Since this is an original article, we need to write a summary section. However, I won't be doing this right now, but it's important that you do it for your own article if necessary. Now let's move on to the main body of the manuscript. For each section and subsection, the first paragraph should be formatted as first paragraph, which you can find in the upper section. The rest should be formatted as body text. In this case, since the introduction has no subsections, I will be pasting it and then reformat it after the first paragraph. You can see the format in the upper section. Now let's move on to the method section. In this section, we need to be more careful because there are subsections. Each subsection's first paragraph should be formatted as first paragraph and the rest should be formatted as body text. We will follow the same rule for the entire manuscript until we reach the references. Now that I've repeated the same process for each section of the article until we reach the references, now we will be pasting our references again using the match destination formatting option. Please read these comments carefully. We highly suggest using a reference management software when you first write your article, as it makes it easier to keep track of your references. Once we paste our references, we need to address any numbering issues that may arise. You can see that their format is set as reference lists. If you have supplemental file, please paste it here. 
You need to follow the same guidelines for figures and tables throughout the manuscript, including the supplemental figures and tables, which I would explain shortly. I do not have a supplemental file for this article, so I'll just delete this section. Now we can move on to paste our tables. Next to the figures and tables, you'll find a comment attached that explains the rules you should follow in details. You will act as the design editor and choose the best place for each table. After copying it, you will format it as shown here. We have a custom AGNR table style implemented in these templates. Now we can write the legend for the table. There's a formatting option for this as well, label figure and table legends, which you can find in the top section. Now let's move on to the figures. It's pretty much the same process. I'll copy the figures legend and paste it here, then add the figure itself. Once again, you'll be the designer choosing the best location for the figure within the manuscript. The size of the figure can be adjusted to your liking, but make sure the details of the figure are clearly visible. Okay, we are done. We have now created our first version. After deleting all comments, we will save this document with the title Revised Manuscript. What we will do next is revise our original submission. We will add the summary section and then revise the article based on reviewers' comments highlighting the changes in yellow. This will serve as the revised manuscript. However, when we submit the article, we should also include a clean version of this document, which should be titled preprint. The revised version will be reviewed by our editors and if the article is accepted, the preprint will be published in a few days and will be indexed, searchable, and citable. In summary, you'll have to submit two documents, one revised manuscript with changes highlighted in yellow, and one clean version, which would be used to publish as a preprint. I would like to extend my gratitude to Dr. Barak Berksuoskara for creating the preprints and recording this video. A special thanks to our podcast editor, Dr. Kevin Hyatt, for helping me narrate the video, and our editor-in-chief, Dr. Max Wintermark, for his unwavering support of the Preprints Initiative. Thank you for watching and listening.